Do you know how to build a telehealth application? Have you ever wondered how to build one? Well, in this video, I'll show you how to build a telehealth application using Locofy and integrate Firebase to it. In this video, I'll introduce you to Locofy, the ultimate local tool which reduces your development time by 80 to 90%. So what are you waiting for? Let's get started. But before we start building the telehealth application using Locofy, let me give you an overview of the entire process. The first step in this process is to tag the static design elements of the Figma file using the Locofy plugin. This allows us to make the static design elements into functional components. The next step is to ensure our design is responsive so that it looks good on all mobile screen sizes. Once you've completed these steps, we'll sync our design to the Locofy builder. Over in the builder, we'll create components for our telehealth application. We'll take a look at how easy it is to create components in the builder and how to instantly create components using the local AI. Then, we'll examine the code and learn how to export it from the builder. This would allow us to create a fully functional telehealth application that you can use to communicate with the healthcare providers from the comfort of your home. But before we dive deep into developing a telehealth application, let me introduce you to Locofy. Locofy is the ultimate local tool for designers and developers. Locofy lets you turn your Figma or Adobe XD designs into fully responsive, production-ready front-end code for mobile apps and for the web. You can choose from a range of frameworks like React, React Native, HTML CSS, Next.js, and Gatsby. You can also use drag and drop components from popular UI libraries and customize your code as you like. Locofy integrates seamlessly as a plugin for Figma and Adobe XD. So, you can use your existing design files, design tools, and workflows. And the best part is that you can export and deploy your code directly from Locofy without any hassle. Locofy also generates live responsive prototypes that work just like your actual product. So, you can test and share your ideas with others. So, jumping back to our application, let's first take a look at the design. So, this design that I made over here is a combination of components from various Figma community designs. Let me get you up to speed with the two different user flows over here. So, the first one, the patient flow, we have two pages for signing up and login. And once the user signs up or logins, he gets greeted with the home page. So this is the patient's home page and we have the bottom tabs over here which showcases us the pages that we have in our application. So we have the patient profile page and then we have the doctor's search page where you can find the doctors according to their specialization or the symptoms that you have. And for the doctor's flow, you again have the sign up page and the login page. And for the sign up page, you have a form to fill out and then for the home page we just greet the doctor and let him know the scheduled appointments that he or she has. So we also have the profile page in case the doctor wishes to edit his profile and also a calendar from which he can decide the available slots that he has on a particular day. So the feature that we are planning to build for this application is a video call scheduling system and a doctor's search page which consists of multiple doctors who have signed up to the application and the user can search them according to the specialization or the symptoms that they have. So more or less, we get finally a simple telehealth application. So now that we have our designs and features in our mind, we need to code our front end and a UI, isn't it? So the framework that we have chosen over here is React Native and the way we are going to generate code is by using Locofy. So as you know, by using Locofy, we are going to generate functional and responsive front-end production-ready code. And to do so, we need to tag our designs by using the Locofy plugin. So let's get into tagging. To start tagging in Locofy, we need to run the Locofy plugin. So let's head on over to the Resources tab in Figma and go over to Plugins and search for the Locofy plugin. Click on Run. Once the plugin loads, you can click on the project bar and click on create new. Give it a suitable name. Over here, I'll give it as telehealth locofy and select a framework of React Native along with JavaScript and the Expo CLI. Now click on create project. Now you can see two types of tagging widgets over here. One is to tag the global components of your design such as the starting screen, bottom tabs, drawer menu, which are all common to the entire application. 
The other widget include layers such as buttons, text, images, etc. Now, after you tag your designs in Locofy, you can preview it live. So, let me click on a design and click on preview. And to achieve a working preview like this one, we need to tag our existing design, which basically lets the computer to identify the various elements which are present in our design and identify them as buttons, text, or a switch, etc. Now, before we move, to tagging our designs, we need to understand what happens if we do not tag our designs. So let me take a copy of this design and showcase it to you. So as you can see over here, I am in a copy of the Locofy design that we had just now. So in this design, we have not yet tagged our design. So let me quickly show you the preview of the design which is not yet tagged. As you can see, it looks like an image and the buttons do not work exactly. But then if you go over here to the design which has already been tagged, you can go over and open Locofy and click on the preview button. You can see that our application works just as fine and the buttons are actually clickable. From this, we can only infer that by tagging our designs in Locofy, we can make the Locofy machine to understand and distinguish between normal text and a text button and also helps Locofy to add functionality on top of your design. Now I'll show you how to tag a simple button in Locofy. So to tag a button in Locofy, let me first select a button component over here in our design. So let me choose the login button and then over here on the tag the interactive elements widget, which is the second one, let me give it a tag of button. So click on the button tag and then if you want to add some custom properties, you can do so, but I'm not going to add any of those. Let's go to layout. I feel that the layout is fine. And so over on the styling, some of the styling CSS properties are given over here. So I'm fine with those as well. So let me move over to the actions tab. So over on the actions tab, we can see that we have a trigger, which is either a press or a long press, which triggers the button to execute some sort of an action. And so let's select press as a trigger and also I would like to add an effect over here. So let's add an opacity effect which basically lowers the opacity of the given value over here of the color when the user clicks on the button. And for the action that needs to be executed when the user clicks on the button, let me go over here and click on change page since we need to transition from the login page to the home page of the patient. Let me choose the patient home page as the page that would be redirected to when the user clicks on the button. So let's quickly preview it. Click on the preview button. And when you click on the login button, as you can see the cursor, let's move on and see how do we tag a text input field. So to tag an input field, I think you know the process by now. We just need to select the input field that we find in our design. So over here, the login page suits perfectly well. And so let's select the text input which would be the email address and let's give it a tag of text input. Now click on the text input tag and you can see the variations that Locofy offers for you. So by default, we have UI libraries that offer variations of the text input field. The various UI libraries over here are the React Native Basic one, the UI Kitten one and the React Native Paper library. Let me select the default React Native since I already have a design for the text input field. So let's select on the React Native variation and for the placeholder value, let me give a random value over here. But since we already have a text input as an email, Locofy automatically recognizes the text and adds it as a placeholder. Now if you are going to tag this for a password, you may as well need to check the secure text entry box over here such that the password gets hidden instead of showing as text. Now I am fine with the basic properties. So let me move over to the layout tab. I think I'm fine with it. The styling page. Yep. Cool. And so that's it. We don't have any actions for the input field. So let's preview it again. So as you can see, Locofy previews are designed. And since we have tagged the input field as a text input, and you can see that we can input the text in our preview directly. How cool is that? So now that you have an idea of how tagging works, let's move out of a design and tag a global layer.
let's select the bottom tabs as an example to tag. So let me tag and show you how to tag the bottom tags and make it possible to add navigation into a React Native project. So click on the bottom tabs tag. So over here we have the profile tab. So let's select and then hold the shift key and click on the next bottom tab that you have in your design. So it will be the home page and then the doctor's page. So don't forget to hold the shift key while clicking multiple items and select the bottom tab for the doctor's page. So make sure that you have selected all the bottom tabs in your design and click on proceed. Now Locofy automatically detects the normal and the active state of your bottom tabs. But then let's make it right. So we have the profile tab is for the active state and for the normal state, let me click on the locate button and select the profile tab and click on proceed. Now continue doing the same for all the bottom tabs that you have in your design. So let me click on locate and select the active layer for the bottom tab. Same for the doctor's page. Once you do that, you need to link the items of the bottom tab to the content that would be displayed when the user clicks on the icon. So click on locate for the profile tab and click on the patient profile page. Continue doing the same for the home page and the doctor's page. So now you're done with tagging the bottom tabs. So as you can see, adding navigation to your React Native project is just as simple as clicking a few buttons. Now let's quickly see the bottom tabs in action. Click on the preview button and select a layer to preview. Now once Locofy generates a preview, you can select the icons over here on the bottom tab and you can see that you get redirected to the pages that you have tagged respectively. Awesome, right? Now, in normal application, if the content of your screen spans more than the height of the device that you have, you can scroll the application, isn't it? Now to add the scroll functionality, you need to tag the design as a scroll view. And so let's see how to add the scroll view tag in Locofy. So over here on the doctor's page, you can see that the content actually spans much larger than any screen size. So I think we may need to enable scroll view for this page in particular. Let's select the entire frame and give it a tag or scroll view. Since we require our application to scroll vertically, let's keep the direction as vertical and maybe check the box or show vertical scroll indicator to show the little scroll bar on the right. Now since I have tagged all the layers inside the frame, we get other layers inside the scroll view automatically. But if you didn't do so, make sure you tag your page first and then tag the entire frame as a scroll view. So now let's preview the application. And while previewing, you can see that we can scroll the content of the page with ease. But now I'm sure that you have a good grasp of tagging process in Locofy. We have made the design functional, but what about the next part? Making it responsive. Now we need to make our design responsive since we require our application to scale and suit perfectly fine in multiple devices without breaking the UI of the application. To make the design responsive, we use a feature of Figma called as Auto Layout, which makes the design responsive in Figma itself. Just remember that what you see in Figma is exactly what you get in Locofy. So if your design is responsive in Figma, your design would be definitely responsive in Locofy. Now over here, I have already added auto layout to my design. So if I stretch out the design, you can see that it's responsive in Figma. Now I made this by using the auto layout features such as fill, hug contents, and fixed layouts. And to know more about how to set up auto layout in your design, I'll add a link in the description to a short video from Figma detailing on how to add auto layout into your designs. Now, once you have finished adding auto layout, you can see in the preview that no matter what device I prefer, I get my design as responsive as it can be. Finally, to recap, we just saw how to tag in Locofy, why tagging is important in Locofy, and what happens if you do not tag your designs. We saw tagging various components of our design, 
into functional components which would be used to generate functional code and finally to make your application responsive you need to make your design responsive we learned that what you see in figma is exactly the responsiveness that you get in locify so finally let's take a look at the entire preview of the design after tagging all the designs and adding actions to them so let's start from the sign up page let's click on the sign up page preview it and click on sign up you get redirected to the home page over here on the home page you would like to go over to your profile page so let's click on the profile page and once you're done with the profile page and then you move over to the doctor's page which also works fine let's click on the sign up page for the doctor where you can schedule your appointments or make changes to your profile great so as you can see we saw an entire preview of the design that we converted over here to fully functional and responsive code now to generate the code you need to go over to locify builder and to go over to locify builder open the locify plugin and click on view code now it will promptly ask you if you want to convert all frames to code or just few frames that you want to sync to the locify builder so since we need the code for the entire application you're going to select all frames and make sure that we have selected the right framework and click on view code in builder now once your design finishes getting set up and getting synced to the locify builder you would be redirected to the locify builder and inside the builder you can find the code of your application and add components and props to it and also share the prototype that you receive to your team or if you're fine with the application that is generated you can export it directly to github or deploy it in netlify over cell so let's head on over to the locify builder locify builder is where you can find the generated code of your design and also where you can create components and add props to it finally you can share the prototype of your project to your team and if everyone is fine with everything you can export the code to either github or download your code to your local machine now let me show you how to create components in the locify builder so i have a design element in mind from the figma design which is the articles over here which would make a perfect component to showcase so let me go over to the patient home page over here on the locify builder so let me select the design over here and click on make component now let me give it a suitable component name like health articles and then create now once it's done i need to click on the other components which are duplicated or repeated and tag them to the same component which i have defined over here which is the health articles so let me give it make component and let me choose the existing component over here which is the health articles awesome you can create components for all the repeated elements in your design now as a developer i don't have much time so locofy offers you an ability to automatically make components with the help of loco ai so let me show you the auto component wizard with the help of loco ai and as you can see once i click on the enable button i get recommended few components which would improve the structure of my code and you can also add your props over here itself so as you can see we have 21 recommended components and we'll go one by one to see if they all suit as a component as you can see locofy recognizes the repeated designs and suggest me to make it as components now if i wish to i can accept everything and create components automatically for now let's move on and share a prototype to our team so click on the view prototype button and then go over here and click on the share prototype button such that you would get a public link which you can then copy or send this link to your teammates via email now let me just copy this and test it out in our browser all the buttons the design has now become functional with the help of locofy and so i'm happy with the prototype that i have over here so i'll just head on over to the export tab i'll export the locofy generated code now while you export you have two options you can either directly push to github or export your project to your local computer 
So for now, let me export the generated code to my local computer. So I'll click on export project. And on the export tab, let me just review the app settings. So I'm fine with the default app settings. And for the starting screen, I wish to have the patient's home as a starting screen. So let me select the starting screen. So from the starting screens list, let me select the patient home page and I want all the pages and the components included in my export. I'll click on both the screens and the components and click on confirm code export. Now once Locafy exports the generated code, you can follow the recommended steps and get started with your project. So over here, I have opened the Locafy generated code in my favorite IDE. And before we start building our application on top of it, let's get to know the code that has been generated by Locafy. So we have three folders over here. The first folder includes the assets, which are the fonts and the images which are present in our application. Next, on the components folder, you can find the components that are either created manually by us or the ones created by Loco AI from Locofy component wizard. Finally, we have the screens folder which contains the pages of our application. You can see that we have 12 files over here and over on our design, we have 12 pages as well. So to integrate all of the above files, we have the main app file where the application's navigation code is present. Let us start to extend our apps project by adding authentication to it. So before that, let us run our project. So head on over to the terminal and enter npm install. Next, run npx expo start to start your project in an emulator. As you can see, our project is running on an iOS emulator. So let's start and add our authentication for this application. So to add our application, you may remember that we enabled authentication from Firebase. So let's head on over to Firebase and copy the credentials of our project. So head on over to the project overview tab and go to project settings. Scroll down a little bit and follow the instructions specified over here. So first we have to install Firebase and then copy the credentials, which you can paste it over on a Firebase file. So create a firebase.js file and paste all the credentials over here. Once you do that, as instructed, install Firebase using NPM. Now, once you install Firebase, apart from the initialize app function, input the get auth function and export an auth object using the get auth function. Once you do this, you can go over and start adding the logic for adding authentication. So let's head on over to the screens folder and let's start with the signup page. As you can see from our project, we need to get the input of email and password. So let's use two use state hooks, email and set email, and use react use state hook. Now follow the same for password and create an on handle function. Now for the signup card and the signup bottom container, the signup card is the email and password text fields and the signup bottom container includes the buttons. So inside the signup bottom container, add a new prop and call it on signup. And when the user clicks on the button, we need to call the on handle function. And also we need to pass the email and password inside the signup card as props. Now before we head on over to the components, let's add the authentication logic inside the on handle function. So inside the on handle function, we need to first check if the email and password are not null values. So let's check if the email is not equal to a none value and also the password is not equal to a null value. So if that condition is true, we use the Firebase function, create user with email and password, which you need to import it from Firebase authentication. 
Now inside the create user with email and password function, we need to pass the auth object. So we need to import the auth object from the Firebase file and pass in the email and the password as input. So this create user with email and password method results into a promise. We use the then method to have a callback function which console logs us on the terminal if the user has successfully signed in. So once the user signs up, he needs to navigate to the patient homepage. So we use the use navigation hook to achieve this functionality. So once we have finished adding the logic for the sign up page, we need to remember that we added props for the sign up card and the sign up bottom container components. So first, let's head on over to the sign up card and add the props as a property and over on the text input we need to have an on change text property which basically will set the value the user is typing over on the screen to the email variable which we can display on the app by providing the email variable as the value. Now we can copy this exact same properties over for the next text input and instead of set email we would need to have set password and we need to have the value as password. Now since we are passing the use state variables and set functions as a prop we need to add the props keyword over here for all the functions and variables that we are passing from another screen. So once you have finished developing the sign up card component, we can move over to the sign up bottom container in which add the property of on sign up, which we can use to call the on handle function, which we passed earlier on using the on sign up prop. Whenever the sign up button clicks, the on sign up function gets executed, and the on sign up function over here is the on handle function which is defined inside the sign up page. So let's try it out. And as you can see, we got the log as sign in done over on the terminal. And also we got navigated to the patient home page. Now we'll do the same for the login page too. Head on over to the login page and we'll copy the same two use state hooks over on the login page since we require the email and the password for login as well and we'll copy the on handle function here as well and slightly modify the code such that we do not create an user entirely but log in to an user profile which is already present. So how do you do that? We use the sign in with email and password method from Firebase Auth and instead of create user with email and password, we will be using sign with email and password and pass on the auth object which you can import from Firebase and console log as login done over on the terminal. Now we need to use the same on change text and value properties which we used on the sign up card component so let me copy it from there and reuse it on the login page so we do not require the props over here once you do that copy the same for the next text input and for over here we'll use the set pass use state function and password as a variable when the login button is clicked we'll be calling the on handle function over here so this is the login page. Let me refresh the app such that we get the login page and we'll test it out too. As you can see from the terminal log, we can see that the user has successfully logged in and also we get navigated to the home page. Now you can copy the same logic of the sign up page and the login page to the respective doctor's pages, which also require signing up and login functionalities. And as you can see, setting up authentication for your project by using Firebase is fairly straightforward and much simpler and requires less code 
to be written. Alright, now let's go over to Firebase and seed some data in order for us to create the functionality of the scheduling system in our telehealth application. So, going over to our design, you can see that we have two components for appointments. One is the page where you search for doctors and can book their appointments and the other component displays an appointment if the user has booked one. By understanding this, I am going to go over to Firebase and then to a Firestore database and create two separate collections. One stores the global list of appointments which are available for the users to book and the next one will have the scheduled appointments which the users have booked already such that when we go on to build our application, we can check if the scheduled user is equal to the current user and then render out the appointments as such. So let me go on and create two collections over here. The first one would be appointments which would compose the data of the global list of appointments which are available for the user and then we'll auto ID the document and inside the document let's have four fields. So one is for the rating, it's a type number and whose value could be 4.8 and then click on add field, add speciality now and then let's give it pediatrician and then the important one, the doctor's email. So let's give it a field of doc and the doctor's email and then finally the timestamp at which the appointment is scheduled. So let's give it a timestamp and a field name type and the date could be whenever possible and the time let's say 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So we'll review our data and I think it's more than enough. So we'll click on save and then we'll create another collection which will store all the scheduled appointments which are booked by the users. So we'll create a collection called as appointments done and click on next and auto ID the document and over for this collection for building this application let's keep the database simple but in the future if you are looking to scale your application with more details you can feel free to clone my repo which is linked down in the description and you can extend the functionality of your application by cloning mine. Coming back for the appointments which are already scheduled let me have the doctor's email and then and then we'll have a timestamp at which the appointment is scheduled and then we'll have a user email which is used to figure out which user scheduled an appointment with the given doctor. Click on save. So now that we have finished setting up our data inside our database, we'll extend the code to add the scheduling feature using the Firebase Firestore database. So over onto our code for our application, let's first build the doctor's list. So for our doctor's list, you can see that we have a search bar and also the data that we require to be rendered should be stored in a variable. So there must be two use state hooks. So let's create two use state hooks for the same purpose. First one would be for the search bar and it would be a use state hook with a variable type string and then another variable to store the data that we fetch from Firebase. So let's call it appointments and set appointments use state function. We use the use state hook and over here it must be an array. So once you created two variables to store our data, now let's think about how we can fetch our data from Firebase. In order for us to fetch our data for every search query that the user inputs, we need to use a use effect hook. So let's call in a use effect hook. So with the help of use effect hook, I'm going to create a callback function and this function is going to execute every time the search value gets updated. So that is whenever the user searches a new term over on the search bar, the use effect hook runs and collects the necessary data from Firebase and then processes it and renders it in our, in our mobile application. 
So inside the use effect group, I must first query the collections which are present in our database. So let me give a query. We'll use the query method over here, which is provided by Firebase. Let me import it as well. So let's import the query method from Firebase Firestore and inside the query method, let me give it the collection appointments for us to query on. In order for us to execute a query on a collection which is stored in our Firebase Firestore database, we need to head on over to the Firebase file and create a new instance. So over on a Firebase file, in addition to the get auth function, we need a get Firestore function which we can use to export a DB object. So let me import a get Firestore function from Firebase and then export a DB object like we did for the authentication object. So over here we'll use the Firestore method and now we are going to export the DB object. Now we'll use this DB object over on the collections to fetch the collection called as appointments and we need to fetch the appointments which only have the speciality which we have specified in the database the speciality must be equal to the search value of the user so we'll use a var function the value inside the fish the value inside the speciality field must be equal to the search term that the user has entered. So with this query, let's create an asynchronous function which would fetch the data and then store it in a temporary array and store it inside the appointments variable. So let's create an asynchronous function and call it update appointments. With this asynchronous function, let's use try catch block to handle any exceptions or errors in our program. So let's use the try block and inside the try block, let me first initialize an empty array. It should be a temporary array in this case. And we'll use the get docs function from Firebase to query the documents which are present in the appointments collection that we have in our Firestore database. So let's use the get docs function from Firebase Firestore and pass in the query which would be used to fetch data from the Firebase Firestore collection. And once we receive the data, we will be storing the data inside the query snapshot variable and we'll use a for each loop to iterate upon them and add the instances to our temporary array over here. And once we finish the for each loop, we can set the data of the temporary variable t into the appointments variable so we can fetch it globally and then we'll use and then for a try block we must also have a catch block so we'll use the catch block and catch the error and console log it so we get clarity if we have done any mistake over on our program now once we use the try and catch block we must call the update appointments asynchronous function. So we'll call it over here and we can finish off the use effect hook. Now the use effect hook fetches data from the Firestore database and is used to render the components. But what about the components which are used to render it? So we'll head on over to our Locofy generated code and pick out the component which is needed for us. So from the Locofy generated code, I can understand but the component over here starts with this view and then we can safely copy this view component and store it in a render component over here such that we can use this component and pass in the dynamic data into the component as props and render it much more efficiently instead of using a redundant code so we'll create a new component and we'll accept props as item 
and we'll use a arrow function and inside which we can return the view or the component over here which should be used to render the component with updated dynamic data and once we do that we may need to remove the redundant code from here so let's quickly remove the code by commenting it out and in order for us to render the component we'll use a flat list which allows nested scrolling and the content container style should be the style which is specified over here in this view tag so we no longer require these view tags over here and we'll update the flat list and inside the flat list we need to pass in the data which is used to render and the data is fetched and stored in the appointments variable and the render item which is used to render the components based on the amount of data received would have a prop called item and the arrow function would point to the render component with key for unique identification we'll use the id from the items data we'll use the id object from the items variable and pass the items prop with the item parameter and we use the key extractor to have a unique key for each component that has been rendered and the unique key would be the id object from the appointments variable and then for adding the logic or scheduling appointments we'll head on over to the render component and scroll down a little bit to find the button to book a doctor for now it is using the use navigation hook to navigate to the doctor's calendar page but then but then we would like to schedule an appointment with the selected doctor so let's create a book appointment function and we'll define the book appointments function over on the top since we are going to perform actions on the database we'll create an asynchronous function and for us to schedule appointments as you may remember we may we first need to add the user email the doctor email and then the timestamp so doctor email and the timestamp can be passed by the render component so let's create a doctor email parameter and a time parameter for the render component to pass them as props to pass them as arguments and inside the function let's create a reference for the document and the reference would be pointing to the database and inside the database we want the app done collection to be fetched and we'll use the await keyword to perform action on the document we'll create a new document over on the app done collection and we'll pass the document reference as a parameter and then and then the document which should be added to the firebase firestore collection would contain the doctor's email which was passed passed from props the user email which can be obtained from the auth object the current user and the email of the current user the time can be obtained from the parameter passed and that's it so we have created a new function to add the doctor's email and the user's email who have clicked on to book the appointment with this specific doctor on this specific time now going over to the render component the items prop must be used to fill in data dynamically so the item prop contains the doctor's name 
the speciality of the doctor, the rating of the doctor and the timestamp at which the appointment should be scheduled. So let's split up this data and store it in separate variables for us for us to easily understand the data. So let me create a doctor's name variable which would contain the doctor's email and I split it exactly when the Atharit sign such that the doctor's name would only contain the first name of the doctor specified in his email address. I'll create a new variable called as speciality which should contain the speciality of the doctor and another variable which is used to store the rating of the doctor and a date and a time variable to store the timestamp and to convert the timestamp to a date we used the to date function to local timing and we'll create a time variable which does the same but except to local time stream so let's so now let's populate the data that we have fetched from the database into a component let me add the doctor's name and a doctor's prefix and for the speciality let me use the local variable speciality and for the rating let me give the rating and pass the variable and for the date let me pass the date variable and for the time let me pass the time variable and if you run the application you can see that the components has now been removed and we have made it dynamically now once we finished adding the logic of our application we need to retrieve the input from the user and store it in the search variable. So let's look out for the text input and over on the text input field an on change text property which uses the set search function and the value would be the search variable which would automatically get the input of the user and store it inside the search variable. Now when we run our application and type in the input as pediatrician since that is what we have stored in our database we can see automatically firebase fetches our data and react native beautifully renders the component over here now we can test it out if it really works by adding a new document over here so click on add document auto id the document id and add the fields of a rating speciality a doctor's name a doctor's email and then a timestamp. Now click on save and let's run over here and refresh our application. And as you can see, two components are getting rendered dynamically. So we have successfully created a new feature into our application, which would be the feature to search for a doctor and book an appointment with him. Now we can click on the book doctor button and see it doesn't look exactly as expected because we have not yet passed the props for the doctor's email and the timestamp over from the render component. So from the render component, I'm going over to the button, which is over here, the book appointment function requires two parameters to be passed. One is the doctor's email and next is the time at which the appointment is scheduled. So once you finish passing the props like this, you can click on book doctor and head on over to the app then collection to see in real time a new document getting added. It's great to see a functionality that we imagined just before a few minutes come into life by implementing Firebase and React Native. Next, let's add the functionality of rendering a upcoming appointments component by adding some logic from Firebase and over here. So in order for us to populate data for this component, we need to store the data that we have over on the Firestore database, which are already scheduled. And we have to check if the scheduled appointments include the user email of the current user. So we are going to do just that. So for that, 
in order for us to store the data of the appointments which have been scheduled, we need a useState hook and we'll use the appointments variable and a set appointments function of type array. Now we need to get the user email of the current logged in user such that we can evaluate and validate the logic and query only the appointments which have been scheduled by the current user. So we so we create a new variable called as user email and get the user email from the auth object and the current user property and from the current user we will be extracting the email of the user. Now we need to import all of the necessary objects or methods from Firebase. Since the patient homepage is similar to that of the doctor's list, I'm going to just copy paste the import statements that we had in our doctor's list over onto the patient homepage. Now we need to fetch the data from Firestore. So we use the same use effect hook that we created over on the doctor's list and configure it a little bit to serve this page. So instead of querying the collection appointments, I need to query the collection appointments done where the user email which is equal to the user email of the current logged in user and the use effect hook must run every time the current user email changes that is every time a new user logs in. Every other line of code is the same exact that we created over on the doctor's list page and so now we need to go over to the return statement from the locofy generated code and create a reusable component out of it. You can scroll down a little bit and see that the view of the upcoming appointments starts. We'll use this frame and we'll use this view as the styling for the frame for the styling for the flat list. So we can also copy the flat list that we created over on the doctor's page and for the content container style let me copy the style of this view tag and paste it over here and remove this view tag entirely. Now I we'll just have one component. Now if you see the text over here should be rendered before the flat list so I'll just cut it and paste it before the flat list and the remaining views can be copied and cut from and we can create a new render component and paste it over there. Now even this render component must accept prop which should be items and the prop that is passed over here would be useful for us to populate the data into the component dynamically. Now once you do that, we go and edit the flat list down below. You can see the data is from the variable appointments and the render component is being used and the styles is from the frame parent. So everything should be working fine over here. So we'll head back to the render component and now we'll split up the data of the item into the respective values. So let me create a doc name variable which stores the name of the doctor which is obtained from the first name of his email address. We will also obtain the date and time which we can get from the doctor's list and then we can populate the data over here. So let me populate the doctor's name. The specialty is not required for this instance and when we refresh the page you can see the upcoming appointments component has dynamically changed to Dr. Jaden. Now Jaden is the first document which we have over here and as you can see the output is exactly what we imagined it to be. Now with the help of Locofy generated code we were able to extend our application with functional components after integrating it with Firebase. So you can see the power of Locofy 
which drastically reduced our development time which otherwise would have taken a day or two to create the UI of the application and then to add functionality would have taken another half a day. But since we have been using Locofy, all things from UI to the navigation of the bottom tabs to the navigation of pages have been taken care for us and we can use our logical thinking to only find the best suitable logic for our application. Thank you for joining me in this journey of building out a functional telehealth application. I hope this video helped you to learn how you can convert your Figma designs to a functional application and if you found this video useful, share it with your friends and we always value your feedback. So feel free to drop your suggestions below. Finally, do remember that you can build an application using Locofy in no time. Start building your next big project with Locofy.